so this is the lid it is called as the gas holder it is nothing but just like a huge lid if the culture has to be increased for a sewage treatment a number of ways can be followed and that usually takes place during the sewage treatment process itself through the gas outlet there will be a small valve there through that he can open it and he can supply to the gas through pipe connection for household cooking purposes so that is how they can use it Hello everyone a warm welcome to another session on chapter 10 of second PUC that is microbes in human welfare I'm Dr Divya biology faculty Vidyashram Pre University College Mysore Temple of Excellence So in the previous session of this chapter we had discussed about the different types of microbes that are there be it fungi bacteria and viruses and we also talked about how microbes are used in the household products wherein we discussed how the lactic acid bacteria that is lactobacillus helps in the formation of the curd that is curdling of milk and how the saccharomyces cerevisiae which is baker's yeast or brewer's yeast is used in the alcohol industry and also in the fermenting various bakery products that is in fermenting various bakery products and also we discussed about how the antibiotics and alcohol beverages are prepared on a larger scale in the industry so we understood what is the role of the microbes in household products and what is the role of the microbes in the industries in today's session we shall study about what is the role of microbes in sewage treatment so sewage is nothing but the waste water right so if we have to treat the waste water we cannot use a chemical so adding a chemical is nothing but again you building up the sewage waste so that is why we need to go in for the beneficial microbes in order to clean the sewage water and how are they used we shall see and what is the sewage water used for after the cleaning purpose what we can derive out of it all that we shall study so to begin with studying the role of microbes in sewage treatment so here sewage treatment can usually done by the heterotrophic microbes so heterotrophic microbes are the microorganisms which depend on other organisms for their survival so here these heterotrophic microbes obviously naturally they will be present in the sewage but their culture can actually be increased in a sewage treatment and if their culture has to be increased for a sewage treatment a number of ways can be followed and that usually takes place during the sewage treatment process itself and thereby by using such microbes the sewage can be treated in two stages one is the primary treatment and the other one is the secondary treatment and it is also called as the biological treatment so it is called as a biological treatment because it is in the secondary treatment that we add the microbes or uh, in order to increase the pure that is purification process of the sewage matter so in the primary treatment actually it is a manual method so what exactly is done in the primary treatment we shall look into so let us start with studying about the primary treatment so primary treatment here what what they do in primary treatment is they take the water or let the sewage water into large tanks so you can see here they have large tanks wherein the sewage water is filled so in that sewage water all the other debris that is chemical some of the components such as plastics the waste materials of the industries foam styrofoams so all these will be there so all those are the ones which float because they are uh, of less weight so when they float what can be done is they can be easily removed by manual method so here first and primary treatment the physical removal of particles will be done by filtration and sedimentation process so filtration process is to remove the particles that float at the top and sedimentation process is used to remove the particles that settle at the bottom so here initially the debris all the debris such as the plastic waste then the styrofoams the thermocoles or some of the plastic materials which are lighter in weight they will float on onto the top right so those materials which are be, which are floating on the top can be removed manually by 
sequential filtration that is concentrating on removing each of the floating material one by one by sequential filtration technique they can be removed. Next they are free of the floating debris. Now the water is free of the floating debris. So next step is to remove the soil and the soil particles or the stone particles and all that which is called as the grit that is the small pebbles, the soil particles, everything are heavier in weight. So they will come and settle at the bottom of the tank. So that grit should actually be removed by sedimentation process. So in primary treatment, what are the two processes that they, that they do actually? One is filtration and the other one is sedimentation. Now all the solids that settle from the primary sludge form the, that is I told you. So after separation and all that. So after separation of the grit, that is the small soil particles and the small pebbles that have settled at the bottom. Again, there will be some slimy layers or some marshy layers that actually settles at the bottom which is called as the sludge. So these sludge along with all the other supernatants, they form the effluent. So now it is called as the primary effluent. So what are primary effluent? Those sewage water which are free of the floating debris and the sediments or the grit but they contain the solid, all the solid forms that settle at the uh, base of that particular tank along with the supernatant and the sludge it is called as the primary effluent. So this primary effluent which is present at the settling tank is then taken in for the secondary treatment. So in the secondary treatment what is treated only the primary effluent. So it will contain lots of uh, organic and inorganic compounds mixed in it or dissolved in the water and all that. So that has to be treated. So for that they will send it to the secondary treatment. And in the secondary treatment now it is the function of the microbes in order to clean that particular water. In the secondary treatment what is done is the primary effluent that is actually passed into large aeration tanks. So why aeration tanks? Because it is in the secondary treatment. I told you secondary treatment is also called as biological treatment, right? Because a lot of microbes are used there. So in that particular secondary treatment tanks, lot of aeration should be there. Why? Because we, they actually aerobic microbes tend to grow in that particular tank. So it will have lots of aeration and it is constantly agitated. So whenever you want to grow, say for example, even in the laboratory as well, if you need to grow the microorganisms properly, then if it should be shaped like how we shake a baby in a cradle no, so that it will fall asleep. Just like that, the microbes need to be constantly kept in a slight shaking position so that as and when they shake, the microbe, the culture will start to grow very well. So that is one. So here also in the tank, that is in the secondary tank, they will build the tank in such a way that it is having a constant swinging motion. So when they provide a constant swinging motion or when it is agitated mechanically and along with that air is also pumped into it, it will promote the vigorous growth of that is the very good growth of some useful aerobic microbes into flocks. So it is called as flocks because the vigorous growth of aerobic microbes along with the fungal filaments to form a mesh like structure. So here what happens we know that in the debris bacteria are also there, fungal components are also there. So when agitation or when slight shaking, continuous shaking is done mechanically to that particular secondary treatment tank and also air is continuously supplied to the secondary treatment tank, it will promote the growth of that is excessive or vigorous growth of the aerobic bacteria and also it will promote the growth of the filamentous fungi. So filamentous fungi usually have hyphae like structure. So the bacteria and the filamentous fungi, they together form hyphae like structure that is a mesh like structures and that is called as the flocks. It will increase the flock in the secondary treatment. So that flock that is which is nothing but the growing microbes they will consume a major part of the oxygen. So when these growing microbes they are making use of the organic that is the effluents that are there in the primary treatment water which is there in the secondary treatment tank when it is making use of the effluents that is when it is feeding on the organic matter and the inorganic matter and all that 
they will utilize a large amount of oxygen as well because they are aerobic microbes, right? So when they utilize a large amount of aerobic, uh, that is the oxygen level in the water will gradually reduce. So it is meant that when the oxygen level in the water reduces, it means that the microbes are involving themselves in treating the sewage water properly. So that is why the purity of the sewage water can be measured by measuring the biological oxygen demand which is called as the BOD. So we can measure the biological oxygen demand which is called as the BOD. So if the BOD is less in the water that is the biological oxygen demand if it is less then we can say that say for example less amount of oxygen in that particular sewage water will prove to us that the microbes are acting on feeding of that particular sewage waste therefore utilizing a maximum of oxygen which means indirectly it means that the water is getting pure. So once the water is considered uh, pure according to the environmental standards it will be left out or it will be used for other purposes for gardening purpose for any industrial purpose or any other purpose or it can be directly left into the rivers and the ocean so the treatment so sewage treatment actually involves the treatment of the sewage waste before letting that particular sewage water bodies or the water reservoirs so this is how it is done so here, apart from that, these sewage material, especially even the natural sewage materials that are there, that is cow dung and uh, the plant debris, uh, the decaying uh, organic matter of the plant debris, all that can be used uh, in order to, so all these will liberate lo lots of methane. So cow dung, we know that cow dung contains a lot of methane in that. And methane in larger amounts is not good for the atmosphere. So here, what can be done nor is it good for the water bodies and all that. So here what can be done is the dung waste, the plant material waste, all that can be converted into methane and carbon dioxide gas and that particular gas used for cooking purposes that is to burn as a fuel, to burn that is burn the fuel so that it can be used for the cooking purpose. So for that they use a typical that is a biogas plant they use a biogas plant so this is the most common biogas plant that is used it is very simple so what they have is they will have a digester so the digester is nothing but it is the tank which is put below the ground like how in the wells they actually build a well right after digging a hole then uh, around the well they put the cement rings so like similarly here also the digester is nothing but it is made up of either we can use bricks or um, stones and all that for construction a well like structure will be constructed so that is the digester so here in the digester what is there to the digester now what should be fed into the digester the cow dung and water and all will be fed through the inlet tank this is the inlet tank. So through the inlet tank all the dung and the water will be fed and they will start filling here. The dung and the water will start dung plus water. It will start filling in this particular digester. Now when it is left as such there will be that is the beneficial bacteria that are there in these material. They will actually ferment that particular cow dung. And when that uh, process of fermentation, decaying, all that occurs, what happens? Slowly gas will start forming, that is methane and carbon dioxide gas. So as and when the decomposition process uh, occurs or the plant material, plant debris and all occurs in the digester, the gas formation will get increased. So as and when the gas rises, so the gas rises along with sludge. When you look at that, the digested material, whatever is there, you can see bubbles. It's just like a carbonated drink. So in carbonated drink, when lots of carbon dioxide is there, how bubbles are formed, right? Just like that here also, that froth or bubble that is there is nothing but carbon dioxide. It is a sludge or it is the some sludge along with that is... Um, the froth along with the waste materials. So that is the sludge. So all those along with the gaseous matter, it will start to rise up. So when it starts to rise up, the one more. So this digester tank is actually fitted with the lid. So this is the lid. It is called as the gas holder. It is nothing but just like a huge lid. 
so when the this lid as actually put just like that means uh, like how we cover the vessel right on top of that we place a lid just like that here also the lid is placed on the digester just like that now as and when the gas rises the gases will get filled in this particular gas holder that is methane and carbon dioxide gas not just that various other gas forms if it is there also they in the dung that will also get filled in the gas holder that is the lid and as it gets filled and as the gases are being produced at the digester the lid will start to rise up so once the lid rises up completely it is understood for that particular person who is uh, the setup he will understand that okay now the gas holder is filled with methane and carbon dioxide and then what he'll do through this outlet so this is the gas outlet so through the gas outlet there will be a small valve there through that he can open it and he can supply to the gas through pipe connection for household cooking purposes so that is how they can use it so now what what did i tell you along with the gas even the sludge also will come up so these sludge will as and when the sludge also comes up it will get collected in this particular sludge tank which is all which is also the outlet tank it is the outlet tank so those sludge actually uh, they can also be used as a fertilizer there is no need of uh, discarding them as such it can be used as a fertilizer for uh, the growth of crops gardening purpose and all that so this is how using a simple biogas plant the methane and carbon dioxide can be got by using plant debris cow dung etc and therefore it can be used as a environmental friendly gas for cooking purposes so this is how the typical biogas plant works so this is how a typical biogas plant works so with this we understood how exactly the sewage water and also the any sewage matter such as the dung and all that how they can be converted into a gaseous form and also we studied under the sewage treatment that is uh, two types of treatment one is the primary treatment and the secondary treatment and after the secondary treatment how the water gets purified and therefore it can be let into uh, the neighboring rivers or wherever and also it can be used for other purposes and also we understood how biogas can be obtained from the biogas plant and we also learned how biogas can be obtained with a simple biogas plant so in the next coming session we shall discuss about how microbes can be used as a biocontrol agents so uh, the usage of lot of pesticides insecticides and all that is harmful for the human health as well as it is harmful for the human being who consume that particular crop and it is also harmful for the uh, microorganisms that are present in the soil good microorganisms so in order to avoid that instead of going for the uh, that is chemical kind of farming technique we can go in for organic method of farming wherein we can instead of using insecticides and pesticides we can go in for the usage of microbes in order to control various insect pests that affect the crop plants so for that we can uh, we have to study about what are the different bio con biological control methods that can be followed in order to get rid of pests and diseases by using various microbes so all that will study in the coming session so i hope you understood the session well we shall meet again in the coming session thank you